wave that scorched the country the past few days also hit the Northwest, with temperatures daily rising above 95 degrees. It's been unusually hot. But Justin Romick's been even hotter. And with his third 289 of the week coming in the final game of match play, he re-grabbed the lead of the PBA Oregon Open. ESPN and the Professional Bowlers Association present the Stepladder Finals of the Oregon Open. We're in Portland, Oregon, where it's been blistering hot. But as you can see, there's still snow on Mount Hood. We're nice and cool inside Hollywood Bowl, but we're expecting an equally hot championship round finals. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Durbin. Working with me once again, PBA, ABC, Hall of Famer, Earl Anthony. Earl, Mark Frank's the proprietor here. This is the seventh event that he's sponsored on the PBA Tour, and Norm Duke sure seems to like him. You might make him a partner the way things are going. In the last six events that Norm has qualified for the championship round here at Mark Frank's Bowling Centers, he's won $37,000 but yet to win a title. He's got a chance today. But I asked him, I said, if you could take that $37,000 and trade it in for a championship today and the $18,000 first place, what would you do? He says, you can keep the trophy. I'll keep the $37,000 and take my chances. He's a professional. Well, he's also very practical, it sounds like to me. But if he's going to win that trophy today, he's got to get by four very tough opponents. Number three, Greg Kemp, an outstanding regional player. And in our runner-up position from Seattle, Washington, a veteran left-hander, Hugh Miller. And, of course, our outstanding young tournament leader from Andover, Kansas, Justin Romick. And in that opening match, he takes on a former PBA Rookie of the Year, Steve Hoskins. <laughs> and we're using lanes 33 and 34 here at the Hollywood Bowl. And Norm Duke will start the match, and he tidies up with a little piece of tape at the last second going into the thumb hole. Well, like you mentioned, uh, right here, Mike, it's very warm outside and probably in the high 90s, so there is some humidity in the building, and I think the players' hands are very moist, and he's just trying to make sure he doesn't lose that first shot, maybe. At over the age of 30 now, 31. <laughs> well, starts with that light strike. You'll see a variety of shots. We've got five players. Obviously, the left-hander, Hugh Miller, will be playing them different. But the other four are right-handers, and they'll be playing all over the lane. Each player, because of the way the PBA has conditioned the lanes this week and because we have a very flat, smooth surface, can play a variety of shots, Mike, and get there from a variety of angles. That one didn't quite make it. So when you say that, is, is a guy that hooks the ball a lot like Steve Hoskins going to play more toward the center of the lane, or how will he approach it? I would think he would be playing more toward the middle of the lane. That shot seemed to get away from him a little bit. Got it too wide. There is an out of bounds. If you get it too far out to the right, the ball will skid on you. And if you get into the middle of the lane, there's, there tends to be more oil. You can have the ball hang up for you a little bit, crossing over on spares. Here's a look at the style of this young man. This, uh, this guy's been on the tour eight years. He's got three championships. And watch how deliberately he plays. Look at the cupped wrist. Keeps it cupped all the way through the swing, all the way to the top of the big high back swing. Remember, he's only five foot five. And look at the power in that release. Kind of rears back at the end in the, in the shot. And that's what gives him a lot of that lift on the back end, the real hard hit on the back end. A little better shot there. And that uh, violent pin action from all that uh, revs going down the lane. Both these guys, 5'5", five, five. a little difference in the weight. A little difference in the weight, yeah. I, I don't think Norm wants to wrestle him, but he'll bowl anybody. Norm Duke's not afraid of anybody. This guy here is one of the more talented players you'll ever meet. Remember, if you were watching last week, our expert analyst, uh, Brian Voss, helped us out a little bit and talked about how Norm Duke is capable of changing his rotation, his ball speeds, the loft, playing anywhere on the lane. He can hook it, he can go straight. This shot right here, I think, is one of the, the strongest parts of his game. When he can stay behind the ball, go ba up the back of the ball, end over end, and keep it in, in the pocket area, he eliminates the lane taking him out of the game. If there's a trouble spot in the lane, he can go right through it or around it either way. So his decision this week is that uh, the way the lanes are conditioned, he wants to go straighter. He wants to go up the back of the ball, forward roll. That one got away from him. Hooked a little early on him, and Norm's not happy with that shot. That was just a mistake that he made, and you can see him shaking his head a little bit, his reaction. The 3-6-10 here, 
not an easy spare. Remember I mentioned that spares are tough when you cross the center of the lane because the oil is heaviest in the middle, ball skid or hook. You never know what it's going to do. You have to be very careful. At the 3-6-10, converts it. That caused a little faster heartbeat there, I think. That one started to hook on him. Hoskins trying for a double that would give him a, an early lead in the match. Well, that big hook went over to the Brooklyn side. We talked to him earlier about that big hook and how he developed it. This is what he had to say. Uh, just bowling at home. Uh, you know, the lanes tend to hook sometimes. Uh, you got to play a little deeper. I, I, I grew up bowling in a house that wasn't extremely easy. So you kind of had to do a little something to it to get it to hit. And that's pretty much how I developed a power game. Well, so far, that power game's a little wild on the right lane, but uh, he well, did that's get a, the double. That's kind of a natural reaction. Don't you think you get one ball that sails on you? It's early in the match. That's another one that sailed. He got it way too, uh, way too wide. Uh, until the lanes go through a transition. The players did practice on them for a while, but the lanes here will go through a transition. The oil will move a little bit, and there's resin-reactive bowling balls. You absorb the oil and pick it up. It'll change the pattern, how the ball reacts to the lane surface. Now, Earl, uh, from what I heard from the players all week long, early in the morning, the morning rounds, the, the lanes were tougher. Why was that? Well, just what we're seeing right now. The oil is still too fresh in the head area. The ball wants to skid. If they give it a little room, it skids too far. If they go more direct, the ball wants to hook early. Well, we've got an even match right now. Hoskins and Duke. How's this going to come out? We'll be back to find out right after this. Duke at lay 34. Perfect. Well, most of the shots Duke makes seem to end up being pretty perfect, Mike. He's, uh, he's one of the best shot makers on the tour, as evidenced by the fact that he's the currently the player of the year. Won five times last year. Won five times last year, and uh, it's, uh, it's amazing that he's not having quite that kind of a year again, but sometimes it just kind of gets away from you. You have a great year, and it's hard to maintain your concentration for the following year. And he's only made 30,000 so far this year, and he made 270 last year. A little better shot there. Stay behind it longer, and looks like you got a little more ball speed, Mike. Kept it online. Hoskins, who's been uh, basically lost on this right lane, did manage to get a double crossing over. We'll see what kind of adjustment he's going to make here. I think he's a little confused on the right-hand lane, but I talked to him, and he said he's ready to win. He feels good, and he feels like, he's, like his game's in shape, and he likes the shot. Hit him thin and watch him spin. Well, the Tour de France is coming up tomorrow. It's uh, stage 15, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, presented by Michelin. And Steve Hoskins is looking to uh, ride in on that strike for a double here. Well, they can't afford to let Duke get away. Once Duke gets it going, he's a great front runner. If you let him get away from him, you'll never see him again. Ooh, an unusual 10 pin there on that light mixer hit. Normally they'll carry those hits. That resin reactive ball usually gets the pins really flying across the lane. That one didn't do the job for him. The head pin just stayed out over on the left side. Kind of trapped over there with the four and the seven. Is it always the head pin that comes back across? Well, not always. For you, it was the five. Oh, I mean, you used to hit them so hard, Mikey. I don't... <laughs> And there's Lisa Hoskins rooting her husband on. I think he got her a little nervous on that 10 pin. The ball almost went to the left of it. Well, he's been known to miss a spare now and then. That's true. Norm Duke. Norm's always thinking. He comes up with different things to make his game stronger, it seems like, every week. Well, he hasn't missed on that lane. We're going to take a little look at Norm's footwork. Now watch his left foot. Watch what he does to start his approach. You see him hitch the right knee. Now watch the left foot go back. What that does is gets Norm's shoulders out front, makes him rush a little bit to catch up with his body weight. He feels by getting the faster feet and getting his weight out front, he can actually get more strength or lift on the ball, more rotation. And when he can do that, he feels like he's a better player. Trying for four. Knocks that 10 pin out of there. 
Norm Duke distancing himself right now. He's leading by 30 pins. We're going to go to break right now. We'll be back for the completion of this match right after these messages. Outstanding trophy there for the uh, champion of the PBA Oregon Open. City of Roses. Look at those roses there. Steve Hoskins. He has to get it going now. He's running out of frames. Norm Duke with a 30 pin lead and he's a great front runner as I mentioned. So, oh, what a great move there, huh, Mike? Moved a little deeper, looks like. Put a little more on the ball and a got little, it back. A little less overreaction there. Take another look at that shot. Steve, sitting on the bench during commercial, came up with a great idea. Moved deeper in the lane. You can see him. He's in there around the fourth arrow. Put more rotation on the ball. Gave it more room. Got it back. Is he going to do the same on the left lane now? I doubt it. He was hitting the left lane. The right lane was his problem. He should just play him differently. Play the lane the way they'll let you play. But he did move in, Mike. You're right. Moved in deeper. Didn't get it back. And that's the penalty you pay if it doesn't come back at that extreme angle. The 0210. Well, that angle plus the ball coming in so much behind the head pin. There. The extreme angle. It's late. It's behind the head pin. And here's another look at that shot. Watch what happens here to the head pin. He just gets a little piece of it. Watch the ball go down the lane. It turns over right here, but it's too far down the lane. The head pin comes off the wall, but not with enough momentum to get back. He didn't get any part of the two pin. Two into the 10. Slide it across. Almost. Excellent try. Norm Duke in a commanding position right now. Forty two pins ahead as we head to the eighth frame. Duke on a lane that he has not missed yet. He just never seems to let up once he gets out front. And there's the first real mistake he's made. Got away with it. A little high in the head pin, only the three pin. Norm kind of shaking his head. I think he's disappointed in himself here that he didn't. Uh... Well, he's such a perfectionist, Mike. And uh, when he makes a mistake, he's not very happy about it. You see him adjusting that cork grip he has in a thumb hole that absorbs moisture off your thumb and gives you a little better grip so you don't lose the ball. Careful. Oh, boy. Even I was nervous for that one. Uh, she wasn't nervous. Karen says, I knew he had it all the time. That's his uh, lovely wife. She's been a wonderful influence for Norm. She's helped him steady himself a little more, more emotionally on the tour and I think made him a better player. Yeah, Norm, you know, won a tournament back uh, when he was 18. I think you were on that telecast. You had to bring you? that up, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> and sets up the 10th frame by striking in the ninth. Well, that basically wraps it up, doesn't it? Well, I believe so. The worst he can do is something in the 220s. The best Steve can do is, t is 215 if he were to strike out. But still, Steve, I'm sure, is going to work real hard because if nothing else, it's a matter of pride. You want to do the best you can. Switch pulling balls. Oh, boy. <laughs> that one came back from no man's land, didn't it? <laughs> wow. Uh, that's, that's trouble when your opponent is striking like this and you don't know what line or what ball or what hand release to use. Of course, he seems like he uses the same hand release almost all the time. Just gets a little more rounded to get more back in sometimes. In other words, he rotates his wrist around the side a little more. Remember the tip you did a few weeks ago about uh, rotating around the side well, see, of the ball? That's all from observation, never from experience, Earl. So. I knew that. <laughs> and right through the nose with a new ball leaves the 3-6. Steve Hoskins is uh, going to settle for fifth place. Still not a bad week's pay, Mike. What's he going to get? Four grand for fifth. A disappointing week for Steve and I'm sure his wife Lisa and their daughter Lindsay, but he knows he can play with these guys. He's been there before. He's won three times, so he'll be back. And as we go to Tucson next week, he's the defending champ down there, so That's, he's looking forward to... Uh, this is getting him ready for that. That's for sure. Pin Lanes and Pete Tauntas, the hospitality down in Tucson. I think Pete will be on the golf course when we get there. Or? Oh, is he ever anyplace else? <laughs> now Norm Duke. He's really asserting himself early here, and if, once he gets up ahead of steam and gets momentum going, it's hard to stop him. So, Greg Kemp's going to have his hands full, huh? Well, how would you like to be, even though you're an outstanding regional player, though, coming on your bowling on television one of the first times ever, and who you got to play? The player of the year. The player <laughs> of the year, and he's just bowling 240 or 250, whatever. Well, he changed angles here. Well, he's got this one won. He's looking for something. That's thinking. He's always thinking. Duke's always thinking. It looks like he changed bowling balls, too. Changed releases, got around the side a little bit. 
Was he just trying to impress us, or I what? I think he's, he's, and see Ernie Schlegel sitting right there. You can just see him by Duke's left elbow. I think he's trying to show Ernie that you can hook the ball and score here, too. He just changed <laughs> balls again. Ooh, that one hooks. <laughs> wow. A little clinic here. Is that how you carry the skinny Brooklyn? Is that it? Maybe he's trying to give Greg Kemp a little inferiority complex here. <laughs> he came a little nervous going into that next match. Another different angle. That one didn't make it. Well, that one didn't make it. So he's going to wind up with 252. As Duke wins the opening match, 252 to 195. We're going to be back with a tip about steps. Be sure you stay tuned and watch that. Joining us, as we said, for the second game is this year's U.S. Open champion, Dave Houston. Dave, that's two U.S. Opens now. You. Uh, I've been very fortunate, Mike. I'd, I'd rather be bowling right now, but I thought I'd join you guys today and have a little fun up here on the booth. Well, we're looking forward to your expert commentary, and, uh, you know, we know that you're from this part of the country. I assume that you're familiar with Hollywood Bowl. A little bit, yeah. I wish I was a little more familiar with it this week. I didn't perform real well, but uh, I think Norm Duke's going to be the man to beat today. He appears that uh, he's pretty well wired in. I believe so. Oh, what a start. The old 7-10 uh, in the pocket, Earl. The old wall shot 7-10. It looked like the ball's kind of rolled out, David. What do you think? Well, I think Greg is the type of player where he's all feel and touch, and he's a very soft with the ball. But, boy, when he gets it going, he can throw a lot and a lot of strikes. That soft speed kind of help the carry there? Or? It can. When he gets on a roll, it's incredible. He's basically dominated the Southwest region the last couple of years, at one time winning four regionals in a row. But, uh, but Norm Duke up here on lane 34, he can do it all. Let's see what shot Norm's going to be using. He experimented a little at the end of that last match. He's right back where he was, right when just a little light, 245. You know, I know uh, that uh, respect and pride and these things are real important to Norm Duke. Has he earned uh, the respect of his peers out here? I don't think there's any question. Uh, you know, Norm has, has gotten to a level where a lot of us dream of. He can he can do it by hooking the ball and do it by throwing the ball extremely straight as he covers the 2-4-5 there without a problem. He uh, He's definitely... Uh, Extremely talented uh, young player, and uh, he's going to be the man to beat on the tour. Him and Walter Ray, I think, in the next three or four years. Well, he's not that much younger than you are, is he? Well, he's 31. He's, what are you? Uh, I'm 35. But, well, that, uh, <laughs> that's not all. That looks pretty young to me, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, Anything's young to you, Mike. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Well, that reminds me of a shot there, you know, I'll tell you. Look familiar, doesn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes, right? it does. <laughs> well, I think Norm has the ability, as, as Earl had, that he can literally place the ball anywhere he wants to on the lane, throwing by either throwing it straight or hooking it, and I think that's a big advantage. You know, you mentioned, that, uh, Dave, that Greg Kemp has won, uh, had won uh, four regionals in a row in the same year. He won five, actually, all together uh, that year, but... I talked to him about that, the fact that he's, he's such a great regional player. And a lot of people told him, a lot of people told him that, hey, you're just winning down here because you know the shot in this area and all that kind of stuff. And he says the most important thing for him today would be to win this tournament and get the respect for his abilities that that would give him by winning on the national tour and beating the great players. Well, uh, missing two pins isn't going to get it done, though. I mean, that ball just turned left right in the middle of the lane. Then. Sure did. But uh, maybe he's just uh, trying to fake Duke out. What do you think? Or make him overconfident? You think that's possible? <laughs> Duke's such a tiger, nothing's going to bother him. He's just going to get up there and bowl. We're going to take a look at that spare that Greg Kemp missed here. And it looks to me like he just got a little lazy with it, a little soft. He expected that there'd be a lot of oil in the middle of the lane. And remember I talked about spares. Once it gets down the lane, it has a tendency to really move hard left. There's what happened. Well, I think, he, yeah, exactly. He really didn't play it for enough hook. And uh, went too straight, and the ball just bit and hooked right by it. Look at here. That looks familiar. Well, it's going to stand. The machine's got it now. Even if it falls at this point in time, they'll have to put it back up. Well, years ago, Mike, when you were bowling, most of the time they had pin boys, and that would have fallen down. The pin boy would have let it fall down. That's, but since that's we have exactly, automatic pin spotters exactly now, exactly right, Earl. And this Brunswick machine picks it up, puts the wiggle back on it, puts it right back on spots. Of course, you, you were still playing baseball at that time, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> Bad break for Norm. A good, good. A real good break for Greg. Greg Kemp puts him right back in the match, even though he's had two opens already. Start the match, Dave. He's still in it. I don't think there's any question. I think, you know, Greg came out with little butterflies. He's, he's basically a part-time player. I think he wants to become a full-time player, and uh, having to bowl the bowler of the year is uh, no easy chore. <laughs> 
Player of the Year, and with all this talent, especially starting with a 250 game, you have to look at that. Absolutely. Greg's probably thinking in the back of his mind, I'm going to have to shoot 240 or 50 to win the game, and, uh, and that's awful tough to come out here knowing that that's what you have to do. When you get in that situation, do, do you look at it just one frame at a time here, one shot at a time? I think you have to, Mike. I think you just have to bowl the pins and, and, and hopefully get in a zone where you just are bowling the doing the best you can, bowling against the pins, throwing strike after strike. Not worry about your opponent. Well, he's got another shot at that two pin. Well, I think he'll do a little better with it this time. We're going to take a look at Greg Kemp's style here. And David Hillstead, Hillstead, you can help me out a little bit. You can see that he does sit very slowly to the foul line here, Dave. And you can see he cups the wrist. Right. He, he has hardly any arm swing early. It's kind of a muscled swing from the shoulder. That's one thing I'd like to see Greg maybe improve on a little bit, loosen up the arm swing, the leisure to be consistent in uh, making good shots. Well, you know he missed this last time, and uh, it doesn't look like he's going to... He made a big move here on the lane. Way to the right, give it a chance to hook back into it rather than down the middle. Still just barely got it there. Oh, well, that's, that's why they put a lot of pain on him. He got most of it. Has to hurry, and does. And the five goes over late, but goes over. Well, he needs a couple of good breaks just to get him going. I think if he can get relaxed, I think Dave Husted made a very good point when he said he was nervous. And, uh, you know, he's bowling against the best player maybe in the world right now. Here's a look at that pin action, Dave. And look at that five-pin well, dance and spin. <laughs> just get over. What is it, nine degrees it has to tilt to fall? And, uh... That's what they say. Well, Duke getting a little animated there. Well, he's a competitor, and he's showing you that spirit right now. He's not going to let this match get away if he can do anything about it. And he, Norm knew that he was on a strike there, and he could uh, pick up an extra 10 pins throwing that double there. He, he wasted no time just pouncing on it. Norm also seems like a master psychologist. I mean, if, if he can intimidate an opponent in a certain way, he's going to do it. He's a great match game player. He loves to play match game. He likes to play you heads up, and he'll play you for his own money. He's not afraid of anybody. That's exactly right. And the thing about match play is it doesn't matter if you each shoot 250 or each shoot 150. If it's 151 to 150, that's all, obviously that's all it takes. And, and normal play into that. If, it, uh, if he has to have, play a little mind games with you, bowling slow, bowling fast, whatever it takes, he'll do it. That's part of the game. There's a psychology in the game, and the guys that are the smartest upstairs, not only talent-wise physically, but you have to use your head also. It's a good point, Dave. At the temp in, he has no trouble. Duke's ahead by 19. Kemp's working on a strike. We're going to go away for some important messages. Stay tuned for them, please. Mike Durbin back here with Earl Anthony and Dave Houston. We're at the championship round finals of the PBA Oregon Open here at Hollywood Bowl. Portland, Oregon on lanes 33 and 34 going into the sixth frame. With Greg Kemp down by 19 pins. Chance to get back in the match here with a couple of strikes, Dave. A little more ball speed there, huh? I think so. I think he went a little harder and a little straighter. The ball held line, flush in the pocket. Well, another golf major coming up. The British Open. Nick Price, the defending champion. That's going to be Thursday at both 9 a.m. and 6 a.m. Pacific time. Earl, you're going to enjoy that. Well, I watch ESPN just by every chance I get. When they got the British Open, you can count on me watching it. Uh oh wow well David in my opinion that happens to a guy that's not used to throwing the ball hard he can throw it right through the break point sometimes and it looks like he got it a little too wide what do you think it is not his game Earl that's exactly right that is not his a game he gets a little in front of it ball shoots to the right you'll see right here just right of the second arrow goes out to about the third max the second board and this never makes it back he almost didn't keep it on the lane yeah it's, it's kind of quivered there Looks like he's just really right now, when the, the way he went up and shot that washout, that spare there, like he was just trying to get out of Duke's way. Just wasted no time. I was kind of surprised. It's still anybody's you think, match. You but think he's embarrassed a little? I don't think he's embarrassed. I think he's disappointed more than anything because he came in here. I talked, as I mentioned, I talked to him. He felt very confident with his game right now. He feels he's rolling the ball well. I think the lane condition might have fooled him a little bit. I think he's not getting the back end he might have been getting earlier in the tournament. The lanes haven't gone through quite the transition they might have with more play. So he's probably not getting quite the ball reaction he wanted. A man like Duke, with all the experience he has, the ability to play anywhere on the lane, is a definite advantage. I think you'll see Greg learns from this. I know 
I know Earl, Earl and Mike as well. Uh, we all go up, kind of look and see how the bowler's playing the lanes, and uh, I don't think maybe Greg did that. Norm's throwing the ball hard and straight and has a very successful shot. Well, that was evident also when he bowled Steve Hoskins in the first match. Steve, uh, a very fine player as far as hooking the ball a lot, and Greg Kemp is closer to that style by far than he is Norm Gook's style, and he wasn't successful, and uh, so obviously that, that means that if Steve couldn't do it, Greg probably can't do it either. I think you're right. And the results are as we're seeing now. Duke, as you look at him, is just a picture of confidence. He just uh, exudes it in every, every step that he takes. Well, well he said it. Excuse me, Dave. He said it when we talked earlier about the $37,000 he'd won in six prior events that Mark Frank has sponsored. He said, hey, I'm a professional bowler. I bowl for the money. And, uh, you know, he'll take his chances anytime. Norm, Norm lives for the action. He, he wants to go out there, like you said earlier, you alluded to it earlier. He'll put his own money on the line and bowl anybody in the, bowl somebody in the parking lot if they want to. He's very <laughs> extremely confident and of his abilities. He's wasting no time here. And he's just going to put the hammer down big time right here. You know, it's funny you say bowl anybody even in the parking lot. He probably averaged 220 out there, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Dave. He put the hammer down. Notice the shot there. He just posed for a little bit, wasted no time. He knew that ball was going nowhere but the pocket. He's well, in the zone right now. Did, did he know it was going to carry? That we don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. He can make a single pin spare. <laughs> <laughs> Duke just cruising along here. Putting the finishing touches on another victory. Finishing it off in style. Well, it's good experience, as you mentioned, Dave, for Greg Kemp. He'll be back again, I'm sure, and he'll go back to that regional guy, regional players, and, and he can still tell them, hey, I proved my abilities on the national tour. I beat a lot of guys. I beat some great players just to get to the TV show. I totally agree. I don't think anybody can uh, disrespect, disrespect his talent and his abilities. He showed it here this week at the Oregon Open as Norm Duke throws another strike there on lane 33. Greg has nothing to be ashamed of. Well, I trade of, places with him right now. A lot of guys have lost to Norm Duke, haven't they? That's, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, three of us sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He was 18 back then when... Uh, no, did he on, whip Mike. you that day? or <laughs> Go to commercial or something, will you, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Norm Duke finishing out with six in a row and 237. <laughs> Certainly has the crowd on his side at this point in time. You know, and... This is not an, that easy a lane condition, so that shows you how really the good shots that Norm Duke is making. Well, Greg Kemp is just finishing out the string here. We're going to take a break right now. Norm Duke is going to be back. See if he can take on Hugh Miller. We'll be right back. Norm Duke is on a roll. He's taking on... Yeah, a little change in plans here. He's got Duke starting the match, and uh, Duke's had everybody starting on the other side, right? Well, they, he didn't have the choice in the second match, but yeah. He seems to have both lanes down, though. Well, that one he was a little bit out of time, really fast with his feet, and uh, there's a result. Generally, when you get the, to the foul line quickly, as you know, and the shoulders are out in front, uh, he was really fast that time. You throw the ball into the floor and it wants to go left. Here's another look at it. Watch how this ball will get off his hand very early and you see him hop at the foul line. It's a pretty good indication he was there too quickly. Well, only a 10 pin to shoot though, so uh, you make those mistakes and get nine and a spare. It's not so uh, damaging. That's right. Here's our first look at Hugh Miller. This, uh, this guy here, uh, I talked to him a little bit earlier, Mike, and he said, I'm going to go with the urethane bowling ball instead of the resin reactive because I can hit. If I make 10 good shots, I'll hit the pocket 10 times. He said, I might leave 10 seven pins and get fined for breaking something. <laughs> but other than that, he says, I know the resin reactive might overreact for me. And even though I might hit, it might get away from me and get the big four or something like that. He says, I'd rather just hit the pocket every shot. Cross lane at the seven pin. No trouble. Here's a look at Hugh Miller's style. He's got one of the better, purer arm swings, you might say. He really lets the ball swing free from the shoulder, and he can develop a lot of ball speed if he ever needs it. You see him get down low at the foul line, that arm out for balance, and he stays there. He has good balance at the foul line and a good, strong follow-through. Hugh is a very accurate player. His strength is his accuracy. He keeps the ball on target almost every time. If he makes a mistake, he'll set the ball down early. It'll go high on the head fin. Very seldom will he miss the pocket, and when he does, it's usually a little bit higher. 
Won six times, uh, 38 years of age. Hard to believe that <laughs> he was getting up around that 40 mark now. Well, it's been 15 years since he won his first tournament. He'd love to be the guy who can say, hey, I showed you how good I am over a period of time. I won 15 years ago, and I won again today. That is uh, an impressive accomplishment to do that. 15 Not many years guys far, can do that. Right. Mark Roth just did it the other day. Remember that? Oh yeah. Not the other day, but you know, a few months ago. During the winter tour, right? right. Duke trying to get himself back on track, on lane 34. Probably a little hop there. I think his footwork is getting a little faster than he wants it. I think he's actually getting the foul line a little quicker than he wants to, and his balance isn't good, and he's just not getting... When you get there like that, you can't get through the shot and stay with it and keep it on line. Is that a tendency when you take a lot of steps, like he shuffles into that six-step approach? Well, remember how he showed his footwork? He takes that... He bends his right knee, takes the left foot, and puts it back, and he says he does that intentionally to get his shoulders out front. He wants his body weight in front, so he has to run to catch it. If your timing isn't perfect, you're in trouble. Playing with that thumb hole again, trying to get the feel just right. We all know that if that feel isn't there, you don't make good shots. At the four pin. Well, we can see we started with 127 guys here. It only took a 208 average to cash and 212 to make the match play. 220, though, to get on television. That's a little bit better. That's a little beyond you and I, Mike, so we can watch. That's why we're doing up here talking. See? Well, I enjoy this, don't you? I do. I enjoy I enjoy watching the, the greatest players in the world perform, and this has definitely, uh, over the last couple of years, been one of them right here. 13 years on the tour. He looks like he's still about 15 years old, doesn't he? Whoops. Somebody yelled in his backswing there, and that, that's pretty hard to do what he did. It takes a lot of strength to stop the ball like that when you're just about ready to release and it. tremendous concentration. Oh, I mean, there's all kinds of thoughts that fly through your mind at the last say, well, just go ahead and throw it, it'll strike, or no, we better stop. Or... <laughs> yeah, the guy said, come on, Norm. And Norm turned around, keeping his sense of humor, says, I'm trying, guy. You gotta wait till he lets go before you can help him. Now they're yelling, Duke, Duke. Creeps a little high, too, for a four-pin, but... Uh, Much better shot. Got off his hand clean. You can see the tension on that face right there as Karen is uh, hoping that he's going to finish higher than third this year. I tell you what, this is, I told you Norm Duke, if he gets out in front of you, he's awful hard to catch. He's a great front runner. Hugh Miller is the same way. If he gets out in front, he's very difficult to catch also. Take a look at this, Mike. What happened, Mike? How did he stop this? My, now, it doesn't matter if you go over the foul line. As long as you don't let go of the ball, it's not a foul. So he could, he could have tiptoed all he wanted, but it wouldn't have made any difference. Hugh was hoping that would get back, and if it had gotten back, look out for Hugh Miller. If he can send it aboard left and have it get back, as his wife, Donna, looks on. The look on her face is, what are you doing out there, Hugh? Come on, <laughs> let's get it going here. The baby Tough spare. Shoes, Tough yeah. spare, 3-5 here. He's a good spare shooter, though. Now, Norm looked back at his wife, I mean, excuse me, Hugh looked back at his wife and took a deep breath and said, whew, I'm glad that one's over with. Well, uh, Duke had 18 strikes in the first two games, and now we've threw three frames here, still looking for our first strike. One pin the difference. Well, something bothered Hugh Miller, so we're having a little problem getting the ball going here. Uh, well, in baseball, that's a balk, but they don't do that in bowling, do they? What's, what's, uh, what both players have shown, you're right, but what both players have shown here is that they're experienced. They know that they can stop, start over, get reset, and make a good shot like that. First strike of the match. Is that kind of like uh, backing off a putt, Earl, or something of that nature? Same idea. And, and, and bowling and golf, you know, there's a lot of things that are similar. They're individual games, but both these players have one thing in common they do trust their arm swings you have to do that you can't be thinking about your swing while you're on the way to the foul line you have to trust your swing you've, you've developed it over all the years you've practiced hard let it happen four pin again third one in a row fourth time he's been high in the head pin we got to remember when he left the 10 pin in the first frame when it was through the nose he's had every ball high he's going to be making a move here pretty quick he keeps adjusting the finger holes and and uh, and the thumb hole in his ball trying to make the ball come off his hand a little differently. So is the, the adjustment he gonna make with speed or move his feet? Knowing Norm, he'll make it with speed. 
he can develop tremendous ball speed for a little thing. Well, be sure to join us Wednesday night uh, for our Wednesday night baseball. In the opening game, we've got the Phillies taking on the surprising Rockies from Coors Field in Denver. And then in our nightcap, it's the first place Cincinnati Reds taking on the Padres from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. 7.30 Eastern Time. Well, the good thing is we don't have anybody from Cleveland watching or on the air right this time, Mike. Is that good? Don't you get kicked. Don't you get kicked. Oh. Norm Duke, what, boy, what got the 4-7 there? Was that the 5? Hugh Miller with a chance to get a double. We're going to take another look at that wall shot here. Watch what happens to the head pin. It goes to the wall, comes right over top, and actually it looked like the 5 pin. No, it was the 2 pin. Right? It was the 2 pin. It was the 2 pin that got the 4-7 there. Hugh yeah. Miller staying with his game plan. He says, I know I can keep this ball in play. This is a urethane ball. It's not a resin reactive urethane. Well, explain the difference to us. The difference is the porous surface. The, the surface of the ball on a urethane bowling ball, uh, the pores are much larger. On a reactive resin, they're much smaller, and there are a lot more of them, so it absorbs the oil faster, and actually it will change how it reacts much quicker. This is an easier ball to control, so you can keep it in pocket. Oh, the old solid seven. So what are the disadvantages of using just the regular urethane ball? The regular urethane doesn't hit quite as hard, so you don't get as much carry power. If you can get the reactive resin ball to the pocket, it generally will strike. Okay. The urethane ball, you can leave the corners like this. Hugh expected this. He told me before we started, he said, I'm going to leave some seven pins, but I'm not going to shoot a poor game because I'm going to be able to hit the pocket with this ball. So he's going in with a patient mindset right away. He thinks 220 can win. Miller's got the lead by nine pins. We've got the last half of this match to go. We'll be back with that right after this. Norm Duke trailing by nine pins on a lane that he's left a couple four pins on, lane 34. Earl, you think he's going to throw it just a little bit harder, huh? I think he's going to pick up the ball speed and slow his, his, his feet, footwork down a little bit. That's been his problem, in my opinion, from watching Norm for so many games over so many years. Sometimes he just gets a little quick with the feet, and uh, that'll he did make you pull a, the ball. He did take a re-rack on this lane. A little better shot there. Got the ball out in front of him. He got the ball out in front that well. A little better approach. Now, did he get the ball up in front of him at the end or early? He got it out on the lane in front of him, and that kept the ball from going early. And the only way you can do that is if you slow your feet down and get your balance at the foul line. Okay. He knew it had a chance and did his little uh, two-step there. Takes the lead by one pin now, headed to the seventh frame. Well, this is what we were looking for. Good close matches, two really outstanding professionals at their best. 4-3. his hands up and says uh, peace <laughs> well I think he wasn't real happy with the release but he was happy with the pin action the 10 pin the last one to go and just a little love tap to kick it out Hugh Miller has to start carrying seven pins or this match is going to be over early down by 11 and he carries I asked Earl or uh, Hugh about him being on the turf for a long time what a future held for him well, I do have a lot of other interests, and one thing I've always really been interested in is real estate. And I'm just getting ready to start building another house here next week. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Bob and Jeannie Withers, are financing it, and we're going to try and sell it. So that's going to pretty much tie up the rest of the year for me. Right now, he'd like to tie up another strike. It would be a good financial investment for him. He'd just dearly love to win this oh, yeah. It's trouble. And... Nope, it didn't fall over. Leaves the 247. Here's another look at that shot by Hugh Miller. And I wonder if watching that sound bite might have bothered him a little bit. Here it comes a little high in the head pin. The ball just actually got away. And I think Hugh might have lost his concentration. Ooh, nice high. break on the spare. Nice break on that spare. Duke working on three in a row, trying for four, leading by 11 pins. A missed match far from over with three frames to play for Duke. And uh, remember, he's had some balls go high for him in this match. And uh, if, he, if he does it again, he might not get, get away with him. These four nines could pop up. He's playing them light now. A little more ball speed, don't you think, Mike? It looked like he came up to me right at the end I there. I agree. 
know, trying for that increased speed, like you tell you, it's hard to keep the feet slow and throw hard. I think what he does, a combination of two things, he comes up at the foul line to try to generate ball speed, and when he does that, he kind of pulls his hand out of the ball so it won't hook. And so it doesn't. <laughs> and it doesn't, you're right. At the two pin. Here's another look at that first ball, the released, and Mike, watch how he comes up at the foul line, as you observe right here. He's starting already to come up. The shoulder's coming up. There it is. You can see him come up off the foot, and sometimes that, again, is a lack of balance, a little fast with the feet, and sometimes it's because you're trying to get more ball speed than you could normally. But what that does is it sets up the ninth and tenth frame where ten pins apart. The guy that can perform at the end is going to win. Oh, pretty shot there. Much more relaxed shot there, it looked like. Well, this is what Duke thrives on. Norm loves to be in a situation where he has to perform. Now, remember, this is a guy that's shot 886 and not won a match. <laughs> two, over, over a period of time. Over a period of time. 286 and lost. Two 300s and tied. But he loves to get in that position where he has to strike. Well, that keeps it at 10 pins, so 10th uh, frame. Duke cannot be shut out, but Miller can sure get his attention. Well, I'd love to see Hugh strike out, just to see Norm in that situation again, just be because he is so good under pressure. Of course, Norm doesn't want to see him strike out. No, Norm, <laughs> Norm just soon see it open. Yeah. Yeah. Although, I, I don't think Norm's afraid of any situation. Hugh Miller to even the match. First Something one bothered him again. just handed it to him, didn't he? He did, and that's amazing. Hugh Miller very seldom will make that kind of a mistake. He's been he's been out here for 15 years playing for a living, and you don't make much of a living throwing the ball like that in a key situation. I'm surprised. Just got away from him. Uh, didn't, put, didn't react the way he wanted to. Crossed over in that lane last time. Well, he, he kind of he, he started and stopped and, and went back and just seemed like you know, he lost his concentration in the eighth and just never got it in the tenth either. 194 he winds up with. I wonder what bothered him uh, both times. It it's kind of uh, surprises me. And Duke. Wow. Five to win and he got five. Is that all he needed? He needed five pins to 191, win. 91, 96. Yeah, right. He's got enough right now that he's going to be a winner. He throws the, the old safe sign right there. And Duke, I'm sure he would have liked a, an opportunity to practice a shot on this lane 34 going into the title match. Which ones is he shooting for? He's going for the strike. He's not even caring about the... Uh, he, well, it didn't count. matter. He knew it. He, he had figured it out early. He knew what he had. Hugh Miller, a very upset player right now, and uh, it's been a tough week for Hugh. He's... <laughs> He's, he's performed well, but it just seemed like whenever the situation arises that he needed something good to happen, it didn't. Well, Norm Duke wins this match 202 to 194. We're going to be back with a championship match and championship frame right after these messages. Now it's time for a championship frame in our opening match. Norm Duke. Needed a strike in the ninth frame here to keep his uh, string going. Well, and if anybody can do it, it's Norm Duke. You see him going to foul nice and controlled there. A little different than in this last game. And that's how you get it done, time after time. Norm Duke winning that first match over Steve Hoskins by a score of 252, 195, and he continued on. In the second match, he was leading. Leading just, by a bunch. Yeah, just <laughs> basically, uh, he, didn't need a whole lot, but he strikes here the first ball in the 10th. And the lanes are making a little bit of a change for him, I think, during this period of time. And as it gone on, uh, you see his reaction there. It's all over. And there's the final score. 237 to 158. Disappointing for Greg Kemp, but Norm Duke uh, says, I like it. He does. But now he had a great match here. Coming into the 10th frame, Norm Duke against Hugh Miller. He needs five pins, as you see on the graphic, to win the match on his first ball, 10th frame. Straight at it. Needs five. He gets five, Earl. <laughs> he gets five. And uh, Hugh Miller had split the 10th frame, as you know, if you were watching. And that gave Norm Duke that opportunity, and he, he got what he needed. And he gives the old safe side playing umpire right here. 
Final score, 202 to 194, which is going to set up Norm Duke in that championship match. He's going to take on a young Tiger, Justin Romek. We'll be back with that match right after this. Mike Durbin back here with Earl Anthony at uh, the Hollywood Bowl for the championship match of the PBA Oregon Open. And Norm Duke's on a drive for 55. He's won 37,000 coming into this. 18 more makes 55, Earl. That's an amazing record over the last six years at Mark Frank's tournaments. This is the seventh try for him, and he's finally got his match play record up to even. He's 6-6 six and six after starting 3-6 and six over the last six years. Well, he just wants to get above 500 now as he starts with a solid 10. And, you know, Justin Romick uh, paying attention here is going to make it finish on that right lane where he struggled the last game. Well, that's leader. The leader has that option. Whoever is higher in the standings as they start the match can pick the lane they want to start on. And he's decided he wants Norm Duke, as you mentioned, to finish on lane 34. Norm Duke, I don't think that's going to be a problem. He's going to make the adjustments. He'll be fine. And our host proprietor here, Mark Frank, who was also the host proprietor last week, as we've often mentioned tonight. He sponsored seven events on the PBA Tour. Just a young guy. Well, not, he's not, yes, he is very young, Mike, but he's also one of the best promoters in the game. No question about it. He really does a job. He gets somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,700 pro-ams in this tournament alone. They had over 3,500 for the two of them. Ooh. Something seems to be bothering Justin Romek, too. I don't know what it, would, what it would be, but Hugh Miller had problems last time, and from what we understand, there's kind of a buzzing sound, but... Uh, that's that's kind of a normal thing, like from the pin uh, pin setters or something, Mike. Or think? the ball return or something ball like return. that. Boy, they, this looks like a pro shop here. The guys are out there you, working on their bowling balls. You need all these tools and tape out there. They couldn't survive without these yeah. things. If I'd be out there, I'd be so nervous, I'd probably cut my finger off of that knife that Duke's got in his hand there. I wonder what he's got on his finger right there. That What that is is a grip. <laughs> oh, too much grip. Got a break. Broke out the 310, only the 10 pin. He puts that grip on the tip of his index finger. I guess you know how some guys get calluses. You know, they really mm -hmm. uh, put that ball in the palm or the, on the index finger like that. And he's had it there for quite a while. It helps him, I guess, uh, keep it. Takes him you off when he's not bowling. Yeah, uh, hopefully <laughs> so. Yeah. Just Just joking, yeah. We were away. I mean, uh, we were talking about that buzzing sound that was down there, and Earl playfully mentioned that it was just nothing with my pacemaker working there. And Duke. You know, I talked to Duke earlier about his seven TV appearances head and said was the law of averages on his side. Well, I certainly feel like I'm due. Uh, I've played tremendous here the last five years, but on television day, I just never seem to, to, to get scores that merit victories. Uh, today, I'm going to try to get 240s, 250s, 260s. I think we have a chance. Well, basically, he's been 230s and 250s. The last game, only 2-0. Well, he's not getting tired. He's just getting realigned here, folks. <laughs> and off of the 10-pin lead. You know, this Justin Romek is just a wonderfully talented athlete. He works out. He's probably in as good a physical condition as any player on the tour. And he feels his strongest suit is actually chasing the oil as the lanes break down and move in. And that's not his best shot right there by far, leaving the washout. Uh, he feels this shot, talking to him about the lane condition here. And I asked him why he bowled so well here. He said, he said that it was because he had practiced going up the back of the ball like like uh, Norm Duke does. And you see this ball got out near the channel where they're, they're out of bounds and just never had a chance to get back. Oh, right around the washout. Wow. Let's take a, let's take a look at uh, this young man's style here. He's a five-stepper, and he's watching him start with the left foot here. Gets it sliding out, but you can see he's in real good position here. He's got the good free arm swing, the straight arm. Cup wrist a little bit at the top, ball just above the shoulder height and a good long slide and push away into the release point. Shoulders just a little bit back from the knee, which uh, tends to make you cut the ball short a little bit. Might be what happened there in that shot. Comes right back with a strike, though. But the damage is done. Duke uh, up here now ready to capitalize that, already leading by 25 pins. 
Well, Justin Romek said he thinks that the lane condition here suits Norm Duke's strength. His strength being he can adjust speed, control, and rotation of the bowling ball as good as anybody on the tour. And that's what he's been doing through these four games, these first three games that he's won. And, of course, this one now he's re realigned himself, got him back right in the pocket area. Wow. Duke pouring him in. No matter what happens tonight, whether he wins this match or not, he will have already joined 15 other guys as a million dollar winners. He's going over the million dollar mark. You only need to finish 17th this week to accomplish that task. Did you reach the uh, million dollar mark? No, I was just uh, about a half a million short, something like that. Maybe. Yeah, but you've still got that half a million. These guys have all spent theirs. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> One more. Oh, he looks unbeatable, Earl. He does. Uh, the last time we said that, we said it about Mike Albee, and he got beat, so we got to be kind of careful here. Justin Romek still has a lot of frames left, and he's not a quitter. He's still working hard. He's on a strike, chance to get back in the match with a couple of strikes here. Down 45 pins. It's almost a must-strike right here. Concentration. Good level head going to the foul. Line. Much better shot here. Oh, a solid wow. nine. Well, sometimes it's just not meant to be. And sometimes the other player makes it so it's not meant to be. And Norm Duke has been like that. And here's another look at that shot. This ball actually just hits too hard. No deflection at all. Rolls over the eight pin spot. Uh, you've heard it time and time again. The perfect strike is when the ball hits the one, three, five, nine if you're right handed. That ball never had a chance to hit the nine pin. Reactive resin, you talk about how hard they hit. They do hit hard. Once the, but once the reactive resin ball grips the lane, it just really creates a lot of friction. And the ball heats up. It actually gets hot. And when it gets hot, it picks up oil. Absor it actually absorbs the oil off the lane surface. Sixth frame. Romick just looking to get anything started. Does. Boy, it could have been a turkey real easy. Well, you remember what happened in the 10th frame when Norm Duke got a little careless, got five count. It could happen again. You never know. And here's another look at that last shot. You can see the tremendous rotation that he gets on the bowling ball. Once the ball turns over or what they call flips and then goes into that end over end roll coming in at that extreme angle, it's hard for anything to stand up. Norm Duke working on four in a row, leading by 45. Very little time. Oh, lots of ball speed here. Really, really flung that one down there. He's off balance at the foul line. Kind of lost his, like he lost his timing again, Mike. Well, you think he was thinking in his mind, just keep the speed up? Very possibly. He's, he's just trying to make sure he doesn't make that major mistake again that he did in the 10th frame. Uh, got the five count. That could happen. Like I say, in this match, not over yet. Justin Roma can still shoot 230, so he's not out of the wood. 235, actually. Remember how he finished the match play against Hugh Miller last night. We were here watching 289 Justin Romick shot to take the lead in the tournament. So he's capable of stringing the strikes. And Norm Duke knows that as well as anybody. He's not going to back off here. He's got to be aggressive right on through the end of the match. If he starts making mistakes or gets careless or tries to, you can't play safe. If he tries to play safe, Romick can get back in there in a hurry. Well, the fact that he stopped striking at least gives Justin a little hope. A little bounce there again, but oh, the solid 10. Duke uh, just girds his mind, make that spare, and continue on. Karen looking very confident right there, too. You see Duke talking to himself. He does that a lot, and what he's, what he's doing, he's trying to make himself concentrate, work hard, be aggressive. He doesn't want himself to relax too much. If he relaxes, that's when you start making mistakes. That's it. Well, now he's in a must situation, Mike. You said must strike, but this is definitely a must strike here. Seventh frame. Down by 43. You can cut it to 33. Oh, he tugged it. Going high. Auto racing. It's the Thursday Thunder promo. U.S. Sprint. Or U.S. USAC Sprint cars. I'm sorry. They're Thursday, July 20th, 9 o'clock. For the 4-7, lots of ball speed there. All you got to do is hit him. That's what he did. And Justin Romack starting to think this might just be all over, folks. I led this tournament almost from the day one. Actually, from the, he led it from the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds of a sixth-round event. And uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be 
the leader after the seventh round, which is the telecast. Well, he could still get 215 if he would take it out. Uh, that would make Duke mark out. Mm -hmm. He's really struggled on the right-hand lane. Lane 34 seems to be the one that's been the toughest for everybody. Has to hurry and does. Gets him out of there. But that one, he seems to be able to get it back from that extreme angle. He can't do that on 34. Interesting, though, that the only time he didn't strike on that lane was when he hit the right lane. He hit the right lane in the first frame and then wasn't able to double up. And this is the one that Duke's had most of his problems on also. <laughs> he keeps it in the pocket, though, when he has his problems. Yeah, he, he doesn't miss it very often. Those three-pound, eight-ounce Brunswick pins... As we said, he hits them thin and just tries to make them spin a little bit. That extreme angle he's coming in, the head pin comes off the wall, gets a little help from the, from the uh, four and the, and the seven. You get another look at it there. Just enough of the five pin to get it dancing, and it falls over. Ninth frame. The lockout shot. Wow. Looks like he's uh, improved his record a little bit. What'd you say? You want to get over 500, he's going to do it here, I'll tell you. What about that 55? <laughs> the drive for 55 for Norm Duke. He might think that we're talking about his age or something. You know? Well, I don't hardly think so. It's, uh... it's been a while for Norm Duke. He's had a tough year. If you want to look at based on last year, he was such a tremendous player. Player of the year, what'd you say? He won four or five times last well, five year? Five times last year, $273,000 he made. All right, he's won 30000 this year. He's going to win eighteen here. Uh, that'll put him up right, right, right at 50000 with uh, maybe 10 tournaments to play the rest of the year, something like that. But he's a threat know. to win any of those. He could win all it, of them. Or all of them. You're right. Oh, misses that. Justin bowled a decent game, he just a solid nine back in the fifth frame. Big shot there that could have gotten him a little closer. Well, that's the one I think really took the heart out of him at that point. When they, if he'd have carried that one, he probably would have had the adrenaline going and been really pumped, but it just kind of deflated him like he'd let the air out of a balloon. He just lost it. Norm Duke never lets up, though. He keeps the pressure on, and that's what makes him such a great match game player, and that's why he's a winner. The PBA competition, most of the games are bowled in match play, and those 24 games of match play, he's as good as you can get, Norm Duke. Just a moment, gonna finish another solid nine. Finishes up with 193. Norm Duke can take it out for 258. He talked about those big games. Basically has done it. Leaves the 369-10 there. He said he was ready and he said he was due. Well, he, he, was, he forecasted this. He said he's going to do it and he did it. You know, Dave D'Entremont, who's the defending champion here, came all the way up the ladder last year. So uh, Dave Husted the year before. So it seems to be a uh, principle here or a pattern that uh, happens here at Hollywood Bowl. And they're all great players. That might help a little bit. <laughs> Norm Duke. Finishing out with double pinnacle in a 230 game. He wins that championship game 230 to 193. Takes a bow, it's a hug, and a kiss. That's the first target he's missed all day. I think he wished, missed his wife's lips, <laughs> but it was close enough. There he is, our champion. We'll be back to talk to him right after this.